All right, Charlie, this is a fun one. I mean, just because uh, it touches so many things of okay. life. Of what life? If, what if COVID never happened? <laughs> now, so many things. Okay, okay this, is, this is one, though, specifically for the Flyers. Yeah. I think about this a lot. <laughs> I really do. Because this was the pivot point of the Fletcher tenure was yeah. the fact that the Flyers are steamrolling everyone. It, it was working. The vibes were through the roof good. Everyone loved Kevin Hayes. He was the Joker. He had a beer named after him in the city. The 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 freaking I wrote an article like three weeks before about the fact that DJ was playing the Wonder Years at games. He was playing new school pop punk. Oh, the that's men right. Singers. They got Reed Streets that yeah, year. Yeah, they got Reed Streets to be DJ. They they were turned into a thing where late in third periods they were playing came out swinging to celebrate wins. The vibes were incredible. The Flyers were like looking like they might kind of be a team of destiny. And then the world shuts down. And they never got the mojo back. They had, I think they were a point or two back of the division. They had a game with with Washington coming up. It was like, if they win that game, they are going to be leading the division. Yeah. And that game was then canceled. <laughs> and so was the rest of that regular season. And so yeah, they, was really the rest of that year. They, yeah. And like just, pe- and no, I'm not talking about hockey. I'm no, talking the about world. the world. Yeah. The world, the year was canceled. And what kills me though, is they came back and won that round Robin. Yeah. Like they were technically the one seed in the East going into the playoffs. <laughs> Because they went three and zero. Jake Voracek said, "I believe it was. I don't know if it was Nasty Knuckles or if it was the interview he did with um, the uh, the Chris Mayer group, the Mayer Media Group. He yeah. did. He basically said that Elaine Vigneault tightened up the team after, like, basically, you know, didn't like overhaul their style of play, but change some of the emphasis emphases, I guess is the right way to say it going into that Montreal series. And it just resulted in the flyers not playing the way that they played both in that regular season when they got rolling. And then even in the round Robin, when they were playing loose, they were playing free and it just Voracek believes that the coach screwed up. And I do think that's a big part of this too, is that, well, you can say, what if, you know, what if no COVID, the vibes. You never, we never got the Elaine Vino that you had in the first, however, what, 69 games yeah. of, of the 2017 season. That Elaine Vino never came back from COVID. And I had heard, and it just, it was just, it just became obvious that like he didn't want to be part of like what essentially was fake hockey. Like, he wasn't able to coach the way he wanted to coach with the kind of restrictions and social distancing and everything. It just seemed like kind of the the joy got sucked out of it for Vino yeah. after COVID. And he went from being a legitimately good coach of the Flyers during that first year to being a bad coach who lost his team within a season. Like, he lost the room by the end of the 2020-2021 season Fletcher decided that it wasn't a permanent thing, that he would come back the next year refreshed, and if he just got a defense that could execute a system, that everything would be fine. And then within a month, the team had turned on him again, and then they had to fire Vino. If there's no COVID, does Vino continue to keep his mojo? He might. It's very possible. And just like looking at that team from that year, through 69 games when the regular season got called, they had six guys with 40 or more points. Last year, through an 82-game season, now a lot of dudes got hurt and everything, five total 40-plus point players. <laughs> like, that team was just cooking. Uh, Matt Niskanen, like, career resurgence. I don't think I don't think Niskanen retires. Yeah, that's the if, other, like, if, if COVID doesn't happen, I don't think Niskanen retires. I think you get one more year out of Niskanen. That's so many little things. Like, yeah, yeah man, Matt Niskanen, uh, great partner for Ivan Provorov, great yeah. uh, veteran addition to the room. He's just like, yo, this ain't that fun. I'm I'm good. I'm out. See ya. Like, you get at least another year of him. Yeah. Like, so many little things along the way. It's, yeah, like, we can say for any aspect of life, what if COVID never happened? But, like, the hockey team specifically, you look at the way things were going, and it was like, holy shit. They are building towards being the hot team going I, into I think, the playoffs. I think that, and, and I... I I almost don't want to say it's a certainty because I haven't evaluated every single team, but I feel like I can say with relative confidence that no team got hurt by COVID more than the Philadelphia Flyers. Like no teams 
organizational trajectory got hurt more by the COVID-19 pandemic than the Philadelphia Flyers. The only team I could think of that has even close to the same case, and it's not there, but it, they at least have a case, is Toronto because they built their entire cap structure under the assumption that the cap was going to keep going up. And it That's never why did. they signed all their guys to big-ass contracts, and then it stagnated for four years. We all silly like the mayor. 